from all over the United States. I'm here to talk about one man today. Because I'm getting a little tired. You know I made a video last night saying his name? It's kind of ironic that I'm going to make this video. <laughs> or live stream. I'm here to talk about Mr. Wrestling Guru. Or Mr. Self Flame Wrestling Guru. Jay Rance, the wrestling, aka the wrestling guru. Oh, that's a funny name. I make this video because I'm kind of tired of all the things he's saying about smarks, anti smarks, whatever you could call them. Some of his comments about wrestling are giantly misinformed. I just got tired, so why not make a video? I literally have nothing to lose. So let's get to this first. Let's let me tell you how I'm seeing this guy. I was randomly searching through YouTube. YouTube was, I think it was like last. It was early this year. I think I saw when you made that video saying S marks about how what is a real wrestling fan. You know, you said this like you're not a real wrestling fan if you like this era. And you like this certain era. It was like, I remember like someone saying that the Atari era sucked, you know, all of us know the Atari era was kind of alright. It was the biggest era in wrestling, but in my opinion, it was kind of like a little bit overrated because some of the things that happened in that era was eh, questionable. You know, certain pushes, certain storylines in that era was good. Not all of it was good. <laughs> I am looking right at you, the mystery of darkness storyline. <laughs> mystery corporate ministry of darkness. <laughs> oh, they oh, storyline sucks so much. Ah, but I'm getting off track. As J Rance, let me how, if I had to describe J Rance in one sentence, he hates Marks. And he likes the actor. He's an actor or smart, or Mark, I should say. You know, this is like a problem with this community. You know, I made a comment earlier this week, like yesterday, saying that, like, laying my things about about wrestling. Which video was it? I'm trying to think, which video was it? It was the whole entire treating wrestling like a sport. I said that in some countries, wrestling is treated like a sport, and he called me an idiot. And I said, like, it was like all over the world. I didn't simply say North America. You know, eventually, someone in North America will try to do that concept. It's like, I said this, like, wrestling doesn't need its characters at times. Let the Ingram Quadro dictate the story at times. You know, it's a big difference. Like, he likes wrestling with storylines, with characters. I like it, like, with the Ingram product. But I also do characters here and there. And I like mine being based more on reality. And, uh, I also want to bury his comment section real quick. His comment section is kind of cancerous. <laughs> So I made this one like sentence like, "Hey, I don't think JD from NY is a bad YouTuber." And everyone's like, "Yo, he's a bad YouTuber. He did this and bad. He's a smart. He's a bad YouTuber." <laughs> it was this one subscriber. He said, "Wrestling is dead." And he said, "Like you're a because you can't spell. You know, I have IEP. I'm willing to spell different words." I literally said, "I gave him a chance. Like, if you want to debate." Come on to my channel. I will debate you, mate. I'm like this, like, if you're going... I have a problem with spelling words in senses. Heck, I like different things. It was like a sentence, like, how I would spell, like, if you're going to some... How I explain it. How I would go through with it. Like, how I would describe my sentence structure. Like, I would spell something like, it's nice to meet you, or, it's not a good explanation. I might do it in a comment one day, 
and explain how our senses work. I'm not perfect. Let's go with the other thing. Thinking certain people are not stars. He got mad over Kevin Owens stealing the stunner. Getting his stunner. Even though he's done it before. Like one of the biggest things he done in the Indies was he had the cutter, but he also did an F5. He also had a pack spot dryer, the move that should be his finisher, by the way, but due to certain risk, they don't let him do the finisher. You, know, you ever watch like, the package pilot almost kept him knowings? You know that he does the package pilot driver. And it's really awesome to see. His original gimmick what he had like three gimmicks. He was with El Generico, aka CB Zayn and WE. El Generico was pack and pile driver. They didn't do a patch follow driver. He was doing his El Chato. Can't pronounce it. It's basically where he gets on the apron on the turnbuckle and actually lets and holds it the person down. Like it's elevate suplex but had to hit the turbo buckle. And that was his finisher. And they usually combine it. Or sometimes he might do a super kick. That's like his original finisher before he got the Lucha kick. You know, Luke Kick was still part of his finisher, even in the Indies. Then Kevin Owens had the Cannonball still, the Power Bomb. You know, he didn't do it as much. Plus, he has. Honest, I'll talk about Jay Rance. How he thinks certain care people on the roster are talentless. Like, uh, one of the people he thinks is talentless is, of course. Finn Balor, or he calls him Finn Gaylord. <laughs> you know, he, you know, Finn Balor is probably more talented than him. Finn Balor is probably, t I mean, we talk like Finn Balor. Finn Balor is like a, if we talk about Finn Balor, he's like a deep ground, a less version of what he was. Like, you watch Finn Balor when he was in New Japan for wrestling. He had the demon still, sort of, but he came out at more random times. Yeah, like wearing like all this make his makeup, his art. He was wearing like Carnage, Venom, Joker, Skull, uh, Punisher, etc. Dark Maul. He came out with the demon, but due to certain copyrights, they kind of skipped that away from his character. The reason why uh, J. Rant called Finn Bal Finn Bal Finn Gaylord because of this whole entire thing. It was an incident with. I don't remember the incident. It's from this year. I know that for this year. It was an incident. It was from this year or last year. It was when he pulled out his dick somewhere. No, that was... No, that was Ricochet. We did the fisting. Uh, I'll probably get demonetized now. <laughs> it's not like I have subscribers to get, no, to get money anyway. <laughs> you know, you call Ricochet Ricochet. Seriously, you know, Ricochet is like one of the best high flyers in the whole entire world. Outside of Will Ospreay, Will Ospreay is a million times better. Like you watch Will Ospreay, you're like, oh my god! <laughs> like some of the things that Will Ospreay does, like no one else does in any wrestling business. You'd be like, your eye, your mouth will drop. Like he actually did that. He actually did that. El Topico. Or his finisher, that handspring cutter. Like, look it up, the handspring cutter. It's kind of insane how he can turn it into something like very different. Ah. Who else he doesn't like on the roster? Trying to think who else he doesn't like on the roster that's was did better in other places? Nakamura. You know, that wasn't really him, was it? Did he say something bad about Nakamura? You know, Nakamura was like, you know, Nakamura's kind of out of his prime. Like, Nakamura, like, in WWE would have been so great back in 2010, 2010, 2011, when he was with Chaos. Like, this is, like, in WWE, we got a Shinsuke Nakamura that's past his prime. 
But that's better like 60% of the roster still. But he still gets no TV time like Ember Moon. <laughs> and Ember is now getting TV time. <laughs> As I recording, she's going to be in a match with Bailey. Most likely she's going to be, most likely that match is going to probably be like 10 minutes. And Bailey's going to win, do some BS. <laughs> Yeah. Calling it now, Charlotte's gonna win the world champ, the women's championship, the next pay per view after SummerSlam, because they are idiots. <laughs> it's like that one be that one comment made in that in that video. If you, you ever watch like uh, anime championship wrestling, he does this thing called the he does this thing called newscast, and when they talked about it was the night. Of WrestleMania, the night after WrestleMania, he also did his tell his mate version of WrestleMania for Amy Championship Wrestling, and they just tore apart to his booking. They literally said this: "Wow, WWE used to be the land of the giants, but they can't even book a giant nowadays." <laughs> and that's kind of funny, but scary. It makes me wonder when actually Walter gets called up. What is Jake Rant's gonna say? Walter has no personality <laughs> and bland as hell. <laughs> like there's some people I'm looking forward to who's saying just making a video saying, Oh this is bad. Like when he does Pete Dunne when he comes up. I'm gonna say it now, he's gonna hate Pete Dunne the first day he comes up there. Calling him too small and should have been a manager. I'm calling it now. It's gonna be like so bad, it's gonna be so bad but funny. He's gonna make certain YouTubers look like they were actually good. Like one of the YouTubers I don't like is Slane Smarks, aka Tony Maverick. He made like this whole entire video about this is your future, we keep on doing high flying stuff, you're gonna be on pain drugs and all this. Like it was one of the work takes I see in wrestling this year, hands down. You know, you know the the style is supposedly got a lot safer. You know, it's not really. Even the WP are still getting injured left and right. It's not because the high flying moves. It's because of because of the schedule. Because they're wrestling like on house shows that should not be there. Then that's not even combat about dumb booking decisions they made over the year. <laughs> Like giving the world title to Brock Lesnar, and he made that bit about Brock Lesnar. Like, hey, I'm happy because Smarks. I'm happy that he gave out to a real person, a real legitimate champion. You know, Brock Lesnar. People, even in the in, even the casuals, are sending a tired of Brock Lesnar, always being on top. It's kind of became its own meme. When WWE feels unconfident, like when they feel like they have no outs. They have nothing to lose. When he rays are down, you know the one thing they always do? Get to talk to Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns. You know, Roman Reigns is kind of doing nothing nowadays. I swear, if we see Brock Lesnar, if we see Roman Reigns versus Shane McMahon for the WWE title this year, it'll be the biggest joke in wrestling in the last 10 years. It'll be a nice way to close out this wrestling. Like the visual of, of Roman Reigns versus versus Shane McMahon would be so funny. <laughs> People make memes for that for years. <laughs> hey, you won the title five years later. Ah, uh, the visual. I might actually make a video about that. I'm quite like, hoping that Jay Ranch actually looks at this video. Again, I think Jay Ranks is probably a cool guy outside of making this like we disagree on wrestling comments but I think that he would be like a cool guy to me in real life I think he would be like a cool person to me in real life I swear we'd probably be good friends probably good friends it's what I say well we have opposite wrestling opinions but we're probably friends in real life. That's what I say about most YouTubers I don't like. Like we have like one well, YouTuber I don't like, who I think that is 
probably uh, Brad Rant, Brad Rules, but Brad Rules is different. At least when he makes his videos, he's at least somewhat entertaining. But wait, Jay Ranch is just boring. Cause he says the same damn shit every single video. To the point it's just boring and agonizing. Hey, like watching one of his videos, he'll say, This is a rest is Jay, a wrestling ranter, and he'll say, Wrest this guy has no talent, this guy has nothing. This is what a real world champion should be. Someone like Batista or Rain Order, even though it's a different era, a different genre. He doesn't know he doesn't want to book up, build anyone up nowadays. And that's kind of like the crazy part about WWE. Because they made like a policy change that it's like in 2010 or 2013. It's probably a policy change. It's probably why they're using this mess that it is. And because they don't want to build no one, or they have, they don't want to build no one. Heck, most of the people they bought from the Indies, got from the Indies, was because of New Japan. Like, look back at, at it right now. Most of the picks, they look at, most of their pickups, like male superstar wise, was from Japan. And some of the more noble women ones, like Kana, El Shirai, or not Kana, but. It, her name is Kana, but in there you should go like Asuka, Io, Shirai, and Kairi. Kairi has a character, but she won't sit work in WWE because of the language barrier. Plus, they won't get what made Io so, what made Kairi so good. Plus, they're pairing up with um, Asuka. Asuka's probably gonna retire by the next year. I'm guessing. I think her contract ends next year. She's gonna retire. It's going to be kind of interesting to see how they're going to treat her when she leaves. You know, I'd like to see... <clears throat> and they kind of fucked her over too. Hmm. <clears throat> it's kind of like sad how they screw everyone else that was good on the roster. Like, if you said like, years ago, like five, three years ago, they would have the most talented roster, some of the best... Wrestlers on their they had some of the best wrestlers. They have Red Dragon, Sh Red Dragon, Shinsuke, Kana, or Asuka now, Prince Devin, Finn Balor in WWE now, Cesaro, you know, Cash on in NXT. Why not reunite the Kings of Wrestling? Because the tag division's dead. Why not reunite the Kings of Wrestling? They don't think about this stuff. <laughs> Like who would like to see? Who would love to see like Kings of Wrestling in 2019? The Kings of Wrestling reunite and just run rush shot throughout the whole entire division. Cause God knows we all want to see Cash on the main roster at least some point. We don't want to see him stuck on NXT forever. He's kind of making uh, Tyler Breeze look like a guy, but Tyler Breeze wanted to go back because no one understood his gimmick. Like they had Tyler Breeze, they gave on Tyler Breeze like two weeks. You know, the person they gave up the most was the Viking Raiders or the War Machine. <laughs> God knows how many Viking Raiders, Viking Experience. <laughs> the Viking Experience was so dumb it was funny. The Viking Experience. Like here's what Vince was like. You know we have two game, two people right here, right? They're Vikings, yeah. They're Vikings. You know they are. You know they have a Viking gimmick. What you should call them? They were called the War Raiders in the War Machine. And you don't call them War Raiders in NXT. So let's make them a more dumb name than War Raiders. <laughs> you know War Raiders was kind of badass. You know I like for War Machine more. So let's call them the Viking Experience. Nah. Then they like. Eh, people hated the Viking Experience. So let's make a new name. The Viking Raiders. And they'll like it, because I'm Vincent Kennedy McMahon, damn it. <laughs> oh my god. I'm Vincent McMahon, damn it. 
I don't expect my mate to sell the company. <laughs> He'll never sell the company. He'll probably be dying. He'll, like, you probably got the strip. You probably have to, like, get Vincent McMahon and have to kill him. Not kill him, but he's gonna die before he gives up the pen on WWE. You literally gonna have to die. <laughs> then you're gonna get the company to Triple H and Saudi when they're like 60 or 70 and they're gonna be so out of touch, they're gonna become the next Vince. Like, that's what's gonna happen. Don't think that will not happen. Vince is petty. <laughs> like, originally, it was supposed to be Shane, but Shane said, Nah, I don't want wrestling no more. I'm gonna make do this whole thing in China, then he came back. And I'm shocked that he's not even took on an off-screen role. Like, NXT was originally supposed to be Shane's project. It was originally supposed to be Shane's thing. But it got shot down like many other things. Like, we can go like all day about all the projects Shane has. What Shane thought about. What Shane was going to do. Like, things like Shane wanted to do, like, buy out UFC in 2004, I think. It was 2004 when they were worth, like, nothing. And they were out of business. Almost out of business. Like, they, like, Shane wanted them to buy out the UFC, saying it would be the next big thing. Like, years later, UFC is bigger than WWE. It has, and it, like, multiple times its size. It's, like, ironic. <laughs> Like you miss a golden opportunity to buy UFC, then you have the whole type ECW thing. Like ECW was back because really of Paul Heyman and Shane. Shane wanted ECW to be successful, be like this underground project. It's like 2006, but not with the whole entire dumb stuff they did. Yeah, it's supposed to be a lot bigger. It's supposed to feel like a lot more like its own thing. Then you have other things that didn't happen. Like, there's a lot of things. Like, look it up. There's a lot of things that Shane would have did if he actually stayed with WWE, or actually was given the okay on some stuff. Then Triple H, like Triple H, is not a terrible booker. He's a. There's some moments in NXT that's really good, and some moments in NXT are just overhyped. Like some of the best things in NXT right now is Undisputed Era. You know, Undisputed Era should have been called up a long time ago. They're probably gonna fuck that up too. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to that. I'm like, I'm scared about that. <laughs> Undisputed Era is like one of my favorite factions of all favorite factions right now in wrestling. Outside of Lost Lobos Altus. No, um, Lost Mimibus, whatever you call it, Japan. Or, whatever faction. Lost Masaka, and Bullet Club. JY's Bullet the JY version of Bullet Club is pretty good. You know, Bullet Club is going on for a little too long, for my liking. You know, if I was running New Japan, I probably would try to break up Bullet Club now. Like, they've done it all. Bullet Club has done it all at this point. They won the IWG Heavyweight Championship. They won the Tag Team Championships multiple times. They have the Elites. Before they left the WWE, they were part of New Japan. And they won. They won the six man tag team belts. I mean, they were like one, the second or third one to win it. And of course, yeah, Cody Rhodes win the. When. He won the IWPG tag team. Uh, United States Championship. You know, J Rance. Let's talk about another thing about J Rance before I turn this off. How he treats other promotions. He doesn't watch any promotions. Outside WWE, I can tell this. He doesn't. He watched AEW, but hated it. Like he doesn't like go outside his bubble. Like many people in pro wrestling. 
That's why I'm encouraging him. I want him. A year since video, I want you to see other promotions. Like, for a month, see other promotions that are in the United States. Or watch New Japan. You might actually like it. You're not, you might actually like it. Like, you saying you hate it. You saying like you hate certain things. You never watched it. You know, you may... Like, you ne might not know. I did it with... I said, the Japanese wrestling is kind of bad. Like, Japanese women's wrestling? No, it's really good. Yeah, like people like Stardom. Stardom has some really creative women down there. Yep, yeah, Britain. Britain. Britain's game good right now. World Sports that's starting to up. Plus, you have who else you have in Britain? World Sports? You have um, Stu Bennett, aka the formerly known Wade Barrett. He is a commentator down there. He's really good. More promotions that he I recommend from the watch. He's probably not gonna watch House of Glory because of because of certain uh, wrestler commentators, certain YouTuber commentators because he calls them trash. That's JD. You know JD as a content creator is all right. He's improving. I don't watch his weekly Raw and SmackDown reviews because they have gotten to a point of saying the same repetitive crap. But I do watch him when he does his other videos, like his normal news videos. He's really good news. He's entertaining. Plus, as a commentator, like for House of Glory, he's pretty decently good. House of Glory has some people that J Ranch will probably like. One of them I think he will probably especially like would probably be Ken Broadway. But who wouldn't like Ken Broadway? I think Ken is like one of the best things going in, new in that company. Ah, uh, Ken Broadway. Hopefully he goes to a bigger company, maybe MLW you might like. They have Ryan Pillman Jr., the son of Brian Pillman. And also the third generation of the M by Eric's. The Von Eric's. And yep, other promotions in the world. There's more outside WWE. Triple A, you know, Triple A is kind of bad. Now, Ring of Honor is dead. And you know, it's not dead because it's kind of dead at this point. Ring of Honor has done so much terrible stuff in the past year, it's just funny. Hey, you know how we should get our ratings, have people get interested? Let's bring back into Big Cast. And play off as a work, you know, in the same day. Yeah, a guy jump over the fence and attack Bret Hart that same day. So let's make it like a it's a work. You know, people were so confused. They Frisco's attacked the attack big ass Enzo and gave him hard strikes. Cause they didn't know it was a work or not. <laughs> you know, that's another big missed opportunity with WWE. Bringing in Matt Stable, bringing those two brothers in. The Briscoes are loyal to you, that company to a fault. They're loyal. <laughs> Can I say that? They're, they're loyal. Capital L, they're loyal. That's like the, one of the big things I can say about them. They're loyal to the to the bitter end. We had to say, like, the biggest loyal group in wrestling. Like, they have a count. No, if they're loyal, it has to be the Briscoes. Like, the Briscoes could have left whenever they wanted. But they still stuck with this. With, they still stuck with them. For thick and thin. Heck, I don't even see them leaving still. I think they're going to retire in Ring of Honor. <laughs> you know, they should have been in WWE. Like, some of the matches that we got cheated out of. Like them versus the Usos, them versus who else in our attack thing that they would have been well against. I would say them versus Sheamus and Cesaro, but Sheamus is retired because too many injuries. That's why you're not seeing him on TV. He's retired. He got so many injuries. Heck, heck, we did he wrestle in Tina? Did the Bristol's wrestle in Tina and Wrestle Team America? I don't think they did Wrestle Team America or MLJ Alliance. That's why it was the best thing about 
you know, Jay Alliance was probably like the, one of the best stables in TNA, and that's kind of funny but sad. Because <laughs> there's so many different things about them, or just about that company, it's just like baffling. And you think of like a great company, terrible companies that made terrible decisions, left and right. Like companies that just don't make good decisions. Top of the list will probably be TNA, aka Impact. You know, Impact is getting better. He will never forget their early years when they started to do d dumb things like putting the belt on certain people that don't even need the belt. <laughs> Giving the belt, turning Jeff Hardy heel <laughs> was a terrible idea from the start. <laughs> the only good thing that came, the only good or good thing or funny thing that came out of it, you know, it's kind of sad, was Jeff Hardy getting drunk. <laughs> That wasn't a good look for the company at all. It's like you think of TNA, like you can do a retrospective on all the dumb booking decisions TNA have done, all the terrible things, like Jim Cornette, <laughs> like having Jim Cornette and Eric Bischoff in the same room, like these two are water and ice. I don't like Eric Fish, not Eric Bischoff, but Vince Russo. Like, these two guys just don't work together. You know, Vince Russo, like, he is alright for the 90s. <laughs> like, today's era of Vince Russo would not work today. Like, by 2000, the 2000s, oh, sorry, like, by the 2000s, like, his, like, his style of writing was dead. Like, we got a, like, in... A, in WCW, we had a number young, I can't remember it. Like, in WCW, like, for a far now, like, watching them, he was uncensored. Like, he had all authority, but again, he was, he had a head. It was him and also Eric Bischoff. They always feuded. <laughs> you know, we got some legendary moments. Like, the legendary moments that we got were, like, so good. And it was like some of the legendary TNA moments. Like some of the legendary TNA moments when Nisi was writing. The ruining certain factions. Putting Samojo in the uh, winners in that veteran faction. I can't remember the name. Like putting a young Samojo in a veteran slash legend role putting like a veteran faction where it was just legends that were disgruntled about their position they put them there it did make zero sense then like what else trying to bury uh trying to bury They tried to bury. Uh, what did they try to bury? They tried to bury AJ Styles. I remember that. They tried to bury him so hard, and the point to he didn't exist. Ah, Vincers. Wow, some of the book decisions Tina made was really dumb. And we think the use writing was bad today. <laughs> you know the use writing is pretty bad and incompetent. Uh Trevor, any other topics I want to talk about Jay Rance. I hope he's watching this video. It'd be fun to see him con see him um answer this video. Cause I cause truth be told, I like different opinions. Like it's boring when all of us have the same opinion. Heck, I deal with this kind of situation all the time. <laughs> I deal with it when I'm reading manga. There's multiple people I'm I've watched, read manga that have different opinions than me. I just like, like Jay Rance to anyone that I've seen on YouTube. The biggest one I have described Jay Rance is probably someone like... He's not in... 
He's not in the exactly the anime snobs tier. He's probably more in the not even Mad Black. Mad Black gets like bottom the barrel, you two. <laughs> He's like a head game of rating. And wrestling knowledge, it's a T. He has, he's coming from a place like he's coming from this place where it's all about the 90s, 2000s. He wants characters, but I kn I can kind of get where he's coming from. I get why certain people like him hate the modern era, could a girl with the 90s. I get it. I get where he's coming from. But again, he doesn't watch our promotions. So, it'll probably be like, it's a reason, it's just like a reason, there's a reason why he doesn't get the modern promotion, the modern wrestling world, because he doesn't watch multiple promotions. But it doesn't help when Dayu doesn't explain, like, some of these characters. He kind of, I can also tell that he kind of watched NXT here and there, a bit. You know, NXT right now is kind of interesting. How to grade him on... E entertainment wise. I watch some of his other videos. He's like a solid B. Solid B. He can improve. Wrestling knowledge a C plus C minus. I know where he's coming from. I already said it, I know where he's coming from. May not like the idea of him, but we exactly know where he's coming from. Heck, if I grew up in that era, I probably have the same. If I watch like during that time period, I probably have the same opinion, but I don't. It's like this, like it's all about generation gap. You know, I think like J Rance is probably more like 27, 25, 27. And I'm like, I'm not gonna tell you my exact age, but I'll tell you I'm around the 60, 18 to 20 range. Plus, I just got out of high school last year. I'll let you guys decide how old I am. <laughs> Again, uh. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll end the video. I'll probably come back in 10 minutes. If you're watching this in real time, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Happy videos. I'll be back in 10 minutes to do more, to actually do my wrestling show. So we start the first night. Alright, bye. Have a good day.